In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Librarian Terminator armor, how to achieve that glow effect, and I'll even show you how to paint those yellow pipes. Welcome to Tabletop Already. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Space Marine Terminator Librarian. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. And I want to say a massive thank you to Bowser Double Frag, who has recently become a supporter to the channel, so thank you very much. To make the Terminator Librarian easier to paint, I've assembled it using sub-assemblies, so I can get to areas I wouldn't normally be able to get to if I'd fully assembled it. Something I've not done is glue the chest piece in place. I've done this so I can leave the head separate for painting. I recommend either cutting away the peg or making the hole where it goes bigger so it's easily removable. We can keep it attached whilst we paint everything. I've also undercoated the Terminate Librarian with McGrag Blue Spray, but you can honestly undercoat yours however you want. I'm using McGrag Blue because I already have some from painting some Ultramarines. When it comes to painting characters, it gives us an opportunity to get more elaborate and spend more time painting those extra details and cool effects. This is really going to help them stand out and show off your painting skills. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Terminate Librarian painted. And to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to paint the armour and some of the skills and techniques we'll need to get everything painted. The first thing we want to do is paint a base colour for our librarian armour using Cantor Blue, and there are some things we can do to help us achieve a smooth solid colour which we can work from. The first thing we want to do is thin our paint. This helps give us more control and makes them easier to work with, and I find using an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, we don't want an overloaded brush either whilst painting, so I like to remove any excess paint onto some paper towel first. And when we're painting, we want to keep our brush moving so paint isn't building up too much, and we want to avoid going over areas we've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint, you'll find that it doesn't cover very well, so we'll need to repeat this process and paint another layer. Painting in multiple thin layers means we can build up to a smooth solid colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Continue to paint layers until you're happy you have that solid colour we're after and just make sure to let each layer fully dry first before doing another one. If you want to work towards a high standard of miniature painting, we really can't overlook the importance of learning how to apply paint to our miniatures. And once you get your head around these basic fundamentals, you'll instantly see what a difference it can make. Now we have our solid base colour, I want to talk about glazing and how it can be used to create extra interest and cool effects on your miniatures. Let's start with something easy like breaking up these flatter areas of armour with a gradient. We're going to use Night Lord's Blue first and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down more than we normally would with two parts water. This is going to make the paint more transparent allowing the colours and tones underneath to come through. We want to use this Night Lord's Blue Glaze on areas we want to be less flat, like around the bottom of the legs and anywhere else you think would look good. And even though our glaze is quite thin, we don't want to think of this as a wash. We always want to apply glaze in an even thin layer, allowing the colours underneath to come through. Something we can do if we want our glaze to be stronger, is to apply it multiple times, building up the strength of the glaze. Again, make sure each layer is completely dry before applying another one. To help smooth the transitions between colours even more, we can use a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from, working in the opposite direction. 
Glazing is often seen as a very advanced technique and something that should be learnt later when we're better at painting. But glazing is a very achievable skill with some time and practice and it's also a lot of fun to do as well. We can take our gradient a step further making it darker using an Anabadan black glaze using the same steps as our Night Lord's blue glaze. Once you're done, we can work on creating some definition, helping to bring out the shape and details of the armour using a recess shade. The colour we're using is a bad and black, and to do a recess shade, we want to paint this directly into panel lines, recesses and around details. This is a more controlled way than an overall wash, so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. And if you're messy like me, after the recess shade we can use Cantor Blue to neaten things up and clean up any mistakes made with the Abaddon Black. When you're happy with how everything looks, you should be able to see how that recess shade has made the shapes and details of the armour stand out more. I know we've already been through a lot in this first section of the tutorial, but there's still one more thing that I want to show you and that's highlighting. I really want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different stages we can do to really make the armour stand out and impress everyone who sees it. First of all I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting as I know it will be up for the task whenever I need it to. As well I don't tend to thin the paint down as I normally would as we're not looking to paint multiple thin layers and we want that strong colour. Again remove excess paint from your brush on some paper towel to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're doing is called a chunky highlight and for this we're using Outdorf Guard Blue. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we've painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. For now we don't want to worry about all these recessed lines, just focus on the actual armour panels. And once you're finished you should see how it's helped to bring out all the shapes and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight and I'm using an equal mix of Outdorf Guard Blue and Fenrisian Grey. This is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against any edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. I will always say highlighting is one of the most important techniques and skills to practice and get good at. Not only will it improve the look of our miniatures but it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Fenrisian Grey and we can use this to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using blue horror to paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. Now we're done with all those stages of highlighting, hopefully you can see what a difference it's made to the look of our power armour. You could stop here and say the terminator armour is finished, but since we've already put so much time and effort into making the armour look as good as we can, let me show you something else that's going to add even more interest. What we can do is paint little scuff marks and scratches around the armour using our mix of Outdorf Guard Blue and Fenrisian Grey. I find not having much paint on your brush helps with this and make sure to take your time building it up slowly until you're happy with how it looks. Let's finish this first section painting any ribbon between the armour starting with a base colour of a bad and black. Next we want to highlight these ridges with Eshin Grey and then a smaller line can be painted to emphasise those curves using Dawnstone. We've now finished painting the armour on our Terminate Librarian and you should now have a better understanding of the techniques we can use moving forward. In this section I'm going to go through the steps to get the different metals painted as well as details on the weapons. There was a lot to take in in the first section of the tutorial but you should now have a better understanding of all the different techniques I'll be using moving forward and you'll now have a better idea of what it is I'm actually talking about. When it comes to the metallic details, we want to know how to paint both silver and gold details around the librarian. So for the silver details we can start with a base colour using Ironhand Steel. 
and to help bring out those details we can use some Norn Oil to create that definition. When using a shade we want to use enough to cover the areas comfortably so it doesn't pull up too much in areas and details and make sure to let this fully dry before doing anything else. We can finish any silver details using Stormhouse Silver to highlight. To paint the gold details our base colour is going to be Retributor Armour. We can then use Reichland Flesh Shade for our definition. Highlight these gold details using Liberated Gold. Now we've got the metallic details out of the way, I want to show you how to paint the other details on his weapons, starting with the Storm Bolter and we can use some of the same stages of highlighting we used on his armour. As always we want to start with a strong base colour and for our bolter case in we're going to be using some Abaddon Black. When that's done let's use some Eschen Grey to paint a chunky highlight. Dawnstone can then be used to paint an edge highlight. Let's finish with a spot highlight painting small dots of Administratum Grey and all those corners. Something else we need to paint is the handle on his force weapon, which has this interesting raised diamond texture to it. We can paint this starting with a corn red base colour. And to pick out the diamond details, I found doing a recess shade using Galvor back red is the best way to do this. We can neaten up the raised areas using our corn red if you need to. Highlight each diamond shape with Wild Rider Red to finish the force weapon handle. I am going to be showing you how to paint a force weapon blade, but that's going to be in the next section of the tutorial when I talk more about glazing. For now let's finish this section painting some cables. Now is a good time to paint some of those red cables you see around the librarian, and for this we can start with some Mephiston Red for our base colour. Now we can apply some Norn Oil which is going to settle into recesses and help them look less flat. Highlight each cable painting a line of Wild Rider Red along the length of them. With those cables done we can move on to the next section painting the force weapon blade and seeing how we can paint those glowing runes on his armour. I now want to show you how we can use glazing to paint the glowing runes and to finish painting his force weapon. We talked about glazing pretty early on in this tutorial and we even used it to make our armour look more interesting. So now we know how it's done we can use our newfound glazing skills to paint some glowing effects and paint the blade of our force weapon. Let's get stuck in and have some fun with our glazes starting with any rune lines and symbols around the armour. We're going to paint these lines starting with a Sotek Green Glaze and use this to make it a bit easier to get into all that recessed detail because a glaze is pretty thin and it naturally wants to go into the recesses anyway. I did apply this a second time just to strengthen the colour some more and I also applied this around any runic symbols to give them more of a glow. When that's done we can use a Temple Guard Blue Glaze using this in the exact same way within those recessed lines, but this time only using it where we want the glow to be more intense, so places where lines meet and any symbols as well. Let's finish these details with a Baharoth blue glaze and the only place we're going to use this is the runic symbols, so they look like they're radiating energy and to help them stand out against all those lines. Glazing is such a powerful technique when it comes to creating smoother blends, tonal variation and interest across our miniatures, so it's definitely worth practicing if we want to elevate our painting skills. To paint those orbs let's start with a base colour using Temple Guard Blue, as we want to start pretty bright. Let's give our orbs a bit of a glow next using a Sotek Green Glaze, around the rim extending out a little to help with the effect. Now we want to get lighter towards the centre, first using a Baharoth Blue Glaze, finishing our orbs with a Blue Horror Glaze where we want it to be lightest. You're probably thinking that this is a lot of work to get a miniature painted, and you'd be right. But you don't have to follow every step that I'm doing in this tutorial, I just want to show you what's possible. And you should only ever do what you feel comfortable doing. Before we move on to painting the Force Weapon, Let's paint his raised hand, making it look like he's using a power. Paint a base colour first using Sotek Green, making sure to get a solid colour we can work from. 
Now we're going to paint all those raised details and give the fingers a edge highlight using Temple Guard Blue. We can then use some Baharoff Blue on some of these raised ridges making it more intense. To finish our hand, Blue Horror is used for a spot highlight, painting little dots on any corners we want to focus our attention. With all the glazing we've been doing for the librarian, we should now all be experts and we can now move on to painting the blade of the Force Axe. Using Stegodon Scale Green, we want to get our solid base colour done first so we have a good foundation to glaze from. And we're going to be working our way through the same glazes we've already been using, starting with the Sotec Green Glaze. We're going to be creating gradients the same as we did at the start and we want to create a gradient for each face of the axe blade to help define the shape of it. You can use reference if you need help to decide how the gradients are going to look. I know I did. Remember, with each colour we're glazing, we can help smooth things out using the colour we're transitioning from. When you're happy with how the Sotec Green Glaze looks, just continue the gradients using a Temple Guard Blue Glaze and then a Baharoff Blue Glaze. Remember to enjoy the process and take your time with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's still going to make your Terminator Librarian look more interesting and stand out more than if you hadn't given it a go. Something that's going to help tidy things up and make things look a bit neater is to highlight the edges using Blue Horror and then doing a spot highlight using White Scar. The last thing to paint on our Force Weapon is the raised design on the sides of the blade and the base colour for this is going to be Avalon Sunset. A Baylor Brown Glaze is then used to start creating a colour shift. We then want to go darker using a Doom Ball Brown Glaze. Edge highlight this raised design with Screaming Skull and again White Scar can be used for a spot highlight. Don't worry, if you don't feel confident enough doing what we've just gone through in this section, you can always come back to it later when you do. Instead, you can just worry about painting some of the base colours for these details. Our librarian is nearly finished, we just have a few last details to get painted, which I'm going to show you how to do in the last section of the tutorial. I want to use this final section showing you how to paint some of the details that still need to be finished on our librarian. The first detail I want to show you how to paint is his book bag and I want to show you how we can make it look like old worn leather and the first colour we're using is Rhinox Hide for the base colour. Next we're going to paint a chunky highlight using Doom Ball Brown. Now we're going to do an edge highlight using Bane Blade Brown but we're going to do this a little differently this time. Instead of a nice crisp clean line, we want more of a broken, less neat line with a few little scratches along it. This helps give the impression it has more texture with rougher edges and corners helping to age it. Let's use some Carrick Stone next to lighten some edges. Again, we want to think about creating that texture. And we can finish our book bag using Bane Blade Brown to paint scuffs and scratches on the flatter areas, helping to age it even more. Hopefully when you're finished, you can see how changing how we paint our highlights can create texture on details. Moving on to his face now, we're going to be working with glazes again, as we want softer tones for the skin. Our base colour for the skin is going to be Cadian Flesh Tone. We then want to use a Bugman's Glow Glaze in the shallow areas and recessed features of his face to create definition. And you can neaten things up using the Cadian Flesh Tone Glaze after. A Kizla Flesh Glaze is then used to lighten the raised areas of the face, using a small amount of Flayed One Flesh to add highlights. His moustache can be painted using Eschen Grey to start with and then Dawnstone for the raised areas. For the eyes, let's start with a Sotec Green Glaze, applying some in the recesses so we get that glowing eye effect. We then want to use some Blue Horror to paint his eyes, and take your time, and we want to try and leave some of that Sotec Green Glaze showing around the edges. Finish the eyes using a bad and black to paint the pupils. We want this to meet the bottom and top of the eyelids. In this tutorial, I've done my best to show you as much as possible to help you get your Terminator Librarian finished. 
but there are still a couple of details that I've not been able to show you and for those details I've covered in other tutorials and short tutorials on the channel. So make sure to go and check out my other videos and subscribe to see more in the future. The last thing I want to show you how to paint is the infamous yellow tubing you always see on librarians. We first want to mix an equal amount of Avalon Sunset and Uriel Yellow to give us our base colour. To help emphasise those curves, Flash Kits Yellow is used along the tube just on the side that is facing outwards. And finally Screaming Skull can be used for a spot highlight, only painting these on the top half of ridges where light would get to. So the Terminate Librarian has given us a great opportunity to really work on our glazing technique and to improve our skills as a miniature painter. And although it's been really challenging, it's also been really rewarding to see the finished result. So let's see how it turned out. Our Terminate Librarian is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel so make sure you go and check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.